By now, we are aware of the difference between elements, compounds and mixtures. Do you remember the differences? Mixtures are like food items that we consume. They contain everything in proportion that we desire. We can add or remove a substance according to our need. Compounds on the other hand are those which have substances in fixed proportion. So if you change the proportion of substances, it will affect the compound and render it changed. For instance, if you remove even one hydrogen from H2O, that is water, the composition changes and water as a compound does not exist. Thus, fixed proportion is a must in compounds. Lastly, we have the elements. These are the purest forms of any known substance. They are composed of only the same type of atoms. There are neither proportions nor random mixing of substances. So can we say that compounds and mixtures are made up of elements? Absolutely. So in nature, it implies that elements are the basic forms of every material that we find around. And hence, in order to study every substance around us, we need to begin with studying the various elements. So where do we begin? Maybe the reactivity or maybe the physical properties first, right? I'm asking if we can study the reactivity and physical properties of each of the elements. Is that feasible? Well, all these would have been valid only if the elements would be few in numbers. Do you know the number of elements that exist? Astonishingly, the number of elements that we find naturally occurring is 98, while the total number of elements known to mankind is 118. So how do we study each element individually for all its properties? Looking at the number of elements that exist, I don't think it would be convenient to pick every element individually and study all the properties, right? Imagine you have to organize the kitchen. You will not place any vessel or eatable randomly anywhere. You will organize the shelves and refrigerator in the most convenient way which is suitable for your needs. Similarly, for studying so many elements, we need to organize them appropriately. An organization begins with arrangement. Yes, arranging the various elements is the first step towards understanding their properties. And arrangement is possible only if we categorize them, right? This is how we organize the elements. And this process of categorization helps us study the elements with ease. In other words, we've classified the elements here. Classification of elements is categorizing the various elements into groups based on similarities and differences in their properties. The classification system helps us in grouping the various elements into categories which we refer to as the periods. Hence the system is also referred to as the periodic classification of elements. Let's get to know how periodic classification was carried out in the early days of emerging chemistry when not many elements were known to people. In the upcoming videos, we will understand the various classification systems put forth by the different legendary personalities. <laughs>